This is the follow-up message to the fox hunting sermon. It's a standalone message, but there's some dangers that come out of fox hunting. And so we need to talk about them very openly, and I'm going to move very quickly today. This concept of fox hunting that I presented to you is simply to indicate the posture the believer is to have, this active, alert, aggressive, detailed life that is vigilant and is quick to see how Satan is trying to sneak into our lives. That is the message of fox hunting. It illustrates what an on-fire believer that is sold out to Jesus looks like. When we are on fire, when we love the Lord, we are not complacent, and we are very alert and very attentive. After being born again, when we are made new in Christ, we are transformed on the inside, and God makes us into a new creature. He renews us. He gives us new birth. And that moment, our spirit man wants to fox hunt. Are you with me? We are transformed from being fascinated with the things of the world to now wanting to flee from them that we might live holy unto the Lord. You know, when the scripture says, be holy because I am holy, to an on-fire born-again believer, that is not a command, that is a desire. If you are born again and you love Jesus, you want to be holy. If you don't want to be holy, I question your salvation. Not because I'm trying to judge you, but because I'm telling you salvation means the spirit of holiness dwells within you. You want to be holy. You want to fox hunt. You want to live separate, pleasing unto the Lord. However, this is where the dangers come in. And so as a follow-up to fox hunting, this message is for young and old alike. This is a According to scripture, an elementary principle we're going to talk about today. And it brings balance to fox hunting because there's several dangers. Let me give them to you. Like danger number one, it's possible for a well-meaning believer that loves Jesus and wants to live holy to become too focused on holy living that we lose our focus on Jesus. And we can begin to work too hard to somehow reach a level of sanctification. That's a danger. That believers often fall into. Danger number two can be legalism. Do you realize that most on fire movements encounter God, Holy Spirit, it's good, end up in legalism? We can see it across American landscape in mainstream denominations. Why is that? Because we can start with our eyes on Jesus and quickly turn aside focusing on our good works, and what we do to somehow live to the Lord. So there's dangers. Another danger can be, and some of you experience this, you listen to the message on fox hunting, you realize, oh my goodness, I have all kinds of foxes in my life. And immediately you experienced condemnation. That can be a danger in talking about these things. So there's some dangers to this that we need to come back Renew our minds, come back to the foundation, and get our eyes on Jesus. So today's message is faith in God. Faith in God. Let's first look, though, at Hebrews chapter 12. Interesting how this is paired together. Therefore, since we're surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin. That's fox hunting. That's being alert, ready especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set out for us. This is the call to fox hunt. We do this, say that, we do this. By keeping our eyes on Jesus. That is key. We cannot fox hunt on our own. We cannot self-sanctify. We cannot somehow impress the Lord. We cannot drive any sin out of our life. So we throw off the weights. We Run from the sin by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. He does it through us. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he's seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. Notice. Notice how this is presented to us. Throw off the weight 
and get rid of the sin. Do it by keeping your eyes on Jesus. This is a key that we, the church, can easily run from, easily lose sight of, because we're so focused on the fox, we're so focused on the sin, this thing that keeps tripping me up, that I lose sight of the Lord Jesus. And so the Word calls us to keep our eyes on Him. Hebrews chapter 6 is really the foundational text today. You know this text, and it's where the writer says, we need to stop going over the basic teachings about Christ again and again and again. Let us go on instead and become mature in our understanding. Surely we don't need to start again with the fundamental or the foundational importance of repenting from evil deeds and placing our faith in God. Faith in God. I need you to see it on the screen and then say it out loud. Faith in God. Faith in God is a tag you're going to hear me say again and again and again. That's the title of today's sermon. This is what we're coming back to. Our faith in God. This verse shows us that there can be a cycle that we never get out of. The writer's like, come on, are we going around the mountain again? It's time to get these things, embody these things, live these things, and move on. So there can be a cycle that can happen. These things are important, and we must know them. And when this cycle is happening, we're in bondage. Jesus said in John 8, 32, the truth sets us free. Church, if we never understand faith in God, which is what we're talking about today, there remains a wide open door for Satan to condemn us and condemn us and condemn us. That is why the writer says in Hebrews 6, 1, we need to learn, be established, be grounded in our faith in God. Because until that, we're in a cycle. We're continually being pushed down. We hear the truth, but we don't apply the truth. We're stuck in this cycle of immaturity. Hebrews chapter 6, 1, if you can put it back on the screen, we see that we are called to mature understanding. Let us go on and become mature in our understanding, mature in our understanding. And so we are looking at faith in God. What does this maturity look like? What is this concept of an elementary principle, foundation in our lives of having faith in God? What does it mean? What is he speaking about? I'm going to give you multiple truths. Truth number one, faith in God saves us. The Bible says we are saved by faith. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9. These are good scriptures to memorize. It is by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this not from yourselves. It is the gift of God. Verse 9, not by works so that no one can boast. We are saved by faith. We can't do it on our own. We must come to a place where we say, my best is not good enough. God, I repent of my sins. I place my faith in the work of Christ. By faith, I accept and embrace what you have done for me, that Jesus saves. Saving faith, this faith in God acknowledges that no one is perfect except Christ. If I have faith in God to save me, it is built in that I am not perfect. But his perfection has taken my place. So faith in God has this built-in principle that I am deficient, but he is complete. And his completeness is where my faith is. It's upon his finished work, on who Jesus is. Faith in God knows that apart from Christ, I'm guilty. I'm condemned. I fall short. I deserve death. So faith in God never forgets this. Jesus lived perfect. He did what I could not do. He died in my place. And when I place my faith in him, then I can be saved. That is one part of faith in God. Romans 3 verse 22. Paul teaches the Romans, we are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are. 
Now, those of us that are in church are like, you know, ready to doze off to sleep and be like, you know, this, I know this, Pastor Tim. I want you to listen to me. I'm calling you, young and old alike, to be reminded of this glorious truth that we were not good enough, that when we were in our sins, Jesus Christ died for us. And when we place our faith in him, he saves us. This is something we never graduate from. Everyone must always have their eyes fixed on Jesus. Why? Because even the grayest of gray, the oldest of you, you still sin. You still fall short. And when you live in this place of faith in God, there can be even confidence in failure. That Jesus took my place. I'm never good enough. Even at 95 years old. Anyone 95? Nope, you're all young. Even our best, even the 95-year-old who's been practicing, we fall short. And faith in God gives me a confidence even in failure that I am made right with God by placing my faith. Faith in God is full surrender. We cannot save ourselves. Faith in God is what qualifies us. Truth number two. Faith in God is what makes us righteous. When we place our faith in Jesus Christ, not only are we transformed, not only are we made new here on earth, but our name is put in, in, in the Lamb's book of life, and now, positionally, something happens in heaven where we are made righteous. Romans 4 and verse 3, the scripture tell us, Abraham believed God, God counted him as righteous because of his faith. Abraham had faith, and then God considered him righteous. That means God looked at him as right, pure, holy, righteous. Positionally, he was considered okay in God's eyes, right. Now the word counted is actually the word credited or deposited. You are made new on earth, but in heaven there's a deposit, a credit into our account where God literally deposits in our account righteousness. This is the doctrine of imputed righteousness, which I taught to you recently. God imparts righteousness. I don't deserve it. I might be addicted and bound in sin, but he imparts righteousness to me, gives it to me. I don't deserve it, but he looks at me and says, Tim, you're righteous. It's a tremendous gift. It's the free gift of God, Scripture says. This comes by faith. We don't deserve to be right with God. We're sinners. But being right with God does not happen when we somehow get good enough. It's not based on my performance. It is based upon our faith in Christ. The revolution of imputed righteousness is a game changer for us as the church. It changes everything. Even whenever I might sin, I can have confidence that I have imputed righteousness. Being right with God does not depend on me. It depends on what Christ has done and my faith in it. So when we live as a righteous people, we live with faith in God. We understand that God loves me, God died for me, and he now sees me as righteous. We just kick the door of condemnation shut. This is the foundation in the church, but many of us don't have this faith in God, and so we struggle with condemnation. This gift of imputed righteousness this understanding of imputed righteousness becomes a catalyst for worship, obedience, and for fox hunting. I am no longer fox hunting to try to somehow impress God. I'm fox hunting because I am so excited that God has made me righteous. It's a different approach. It's a different view. This gift, this understanding of his mercy the deposit of righteousness into our life 
is what motivated the apostles, all those in the past, to give their lives for the Lord. It was this debt that they owed. He has made me righteous even though I don't deserve it. He has justified me. He has imputed righteousness to me. On fire Christians throughout the first century lived in this place. Satan realizes that if he can keep us from understanding faith in God, then he can keep us from worship, obedience, and keep us from living holy. Imputed righteousness, being righteous before the Lord, motivates me to leave my addiction, motivates me to walk in holiness. This is the starting point. My eyes are on Jesus. Remember Hebrews? We fix our eyes on Jesus. This man, this God, this Jesus Christ of Nazareth that died on that cross to give me what I could never get on my own. That gaze, that perspective, that focus on Jesus is what brings me freedom to sin. It is what kills the foxes in my life. We can get all messed up and get so focused on the addiction, so focused on the sin, that Jesus is nowhere in the picture other than somehow we can get warped theology and think that he's up there beating us. Be holy, be holy. When we understand faith in God, we understand that we are made righteous in Christ. New Christians, or can we just say immature Christians, that don't understand faith in God and being made righteous, make the mistake of relying on how they feel. If you're a Christian that is up and down on feelings, it means you don't understand faith in God. Our faith is not dependent on how we feel. Our faith in God is fixed upon Jesus. Whether I feel good or whether I feel bad, church, I'm righteous before the Lord. It is faith in God, my ability to walk in faith towards God that allows me to not live according to how I feel. Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 7, we live by faith and not by sight. See, when immature believers, and you can have gray hair and be an immature believer, it's not about how long we've sat in church or anything. It's about our walking in the truth that we have been presented, that God has brought to us. So there can be immature old people in here. It doesn't really matter. But when we're immature, we're up and we're down. It is faith that brings steadiness, perseverance, and endurance. When we're immature, we might think, God's upset at me because I did X, Y, and Z, or this God thing's not working out for me, or I'm not going to church because I don't feel like it, or whatever. Faith in God brings a confidence, brings a steadiness, because I know who I am in Christ. Paul said, I know whom I believed. I'm righteous. Guys, I don't have time to unpack this for you, but we need to excel in this, and our young people need to excel in this. Because with the epidemic that we just watched, with the gender dysphoria, the confusion, the, the suicide, the depression, all of these things, our nation is reeling. They don't know who they are. And the church needs to be able to rise up and say, I am the righteousness of Christ, of God in Christ Jesus. That level of stability and steadiness is so key. Number three, faith in God is our confidence. We already talked about this some, but when we know that we are righteous, that we are loved, that we are liked, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit, that God has lavished his love upon us, when our eyes remain on Jesus, there comes a confidence. Faith in God transforms our mind, and we walk in a level of confidence that is humanly impossible. Now let me pause here, because this is where it ties to fox hunting. There is, instead of confidence and a focus on Jesus, in many Christian circles, a sin consciousness. In other words, believers constantly in the pits. Woe is me. I'm 
I'm such a wretch. I'm such a sinner. Constantly thinking about their failure. Defeated mentality. The sin consciousness has no place in the life of a born-again believer. Because we're righteous conscious. We are aware of what Jesus has done. My entry into heaven has never, ever been dependent upon me somehow getting myself better. I cannot do it. Now, you're an American, and you think you can. I'm an American, and I like to tell myself I can do anything. If it's broken, what are we going to do, man? We're going to fix it. I struggle with that one. But what's the dominant emotion of an American? We can do it. Guys, I am beginning to realize how much this is impacting our relationship with the Lord. Our best is never good enough. It's never good enough. And the sin consciousness that's in the American church where we're so focused on our sin and how we've got to get better, it's ingrained in us. The AA program, none of this stuff's bad. But we can't work ourselves to a place of being good. We must see ourselves through the eyes of Christ. 2 Corinthians 3, 4 to 6. Such confidence as this is ours through Christ before God. Not that we are competent in ourselves. I am not competent. But our competence comes from God. He has made us competent as ministers of a new covenant. Not of the letter of the Spirit, for the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. You and I are destined for confidence and competence, not because we are some superior person that has killed sin in our lives and we've attained some level of religiosity or some kind of superior place. We are made competent. Because of Jesus Christ. Our eyes are fixed upon him. Our behavior, our performance, our good deeds are not what makes God accept us. And you need to hear that. Those of you that are struggling with sin and these kind of things. Yes, it's a fox. Yes, your posture needs to be alert. But you are sitting on the edge of your tree stand. Ready to kill that fox. Ready to shoot that thing. Not from a place of, I need to be a better Christian. It's from a place of, I'm righteous. This is not who I am. I love holiness. And so we live in a different place. We are called to have confidence in our weakness. Confidence despite failure. Confidence even when I'm sick and I cannot do anything. Do you realize the epidemic in America? When you get old, some of you are facing this. You struggle to have identity because you can't do anything. That's an American demonic thing. We have identity because we're in Christ. We have value because we've been made in his image. Jesus died for us. And yes, he doesn't want you to be an invalid in a wheelchair. But if you're an invalid in a wheelchair, he still died for you. Even if you can't do anything for him. We are so warped by our performance, works, work harder, fix it thing. We can have confidence even when we're old, even when we're sick, even when we're bound in a wheelchair. We can have confidence even when we give in to temptation and sin. That is not who I am. I'm the righteousness of Christ. We can have confidence not because of what we do, but because of Christ. Number four, faith in God, brothers and sisters, is so necessary. This is so necessary. Catch this. It doesn't just save us. Our faith in God sustains us. You can get saved and leave the door wide open and get crushed by condemnation. You can get tossed back and forth by every kind of wind of this and that. You can be all over the place. But faith in God sustains us as a believer. Without a clear understanding of faith in God, we are like a sitting duck to Satan's fiery darts. Isn't it interesting that it's called the shield of faith? Isn't that fascinating? Because it is our faith that saves us. It is our faith that gives us 
confident when everything dumps on us that we're less than, that we're worthless, you're too old, you're too fat, you're too ugly, you're too whatever. It is the faith of God that shields us from those things and causes us to live with confidence. Above and not beneath. As more than a conqueror. Faith in God. It saves us and then it sustains us. So let's look at the scripture. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12, you're in a spiritual battle. Be strong in the Lord, in his mighty power, verse 11. Put on all of God's armor so you'll be able to stand firm against all the strategies of the devil. You know, the writer of Hebrews is like, come on, let's, let's go. You're not fighting against flesh and blood, against evil rulers, authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers, against evil spirits, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, all this stuff. Your culture that tells you you're no good unless you can produce. Euthanasia wants to knock out those that are born in, with any kind of birth defect. And if you get too old and you can't give to society, let's knock you out because you're no good. All this is authorities, powers, darkness, evil spirits. This is a spiritual battle. And so then you jump down to verse 16 in the list of the, ar- of the, the armor in addition to all of these, kind of like a final thing, hold up the shield of faith in God to stop the fiery arrows of the devil. You do realize everything is coming at you to tear you down and rip you away from Christ. If it is at all possible, he is working to pull you from Christ. Satan is working overtime. He has created a culture that you live in. He is working to accuse you in your mind. And the Bible says, faith in God. My ability to keep my eyes on Jesus in the midst of the storm and realize that, you know what? I might be the ugliest person out there. I might be the fattest person out there. I might be fill in the blank. But he died for me. He loves me. He saved me. I am righteous, I have confidence, and I might still struggle with sin, and I might still be bound, and that kind of thing. He loved me while I was still in my sin. Brothers and sisters, faith in God is necessary. We will never rise up and do what he's called us to do. We'll never overcome until we can have faith in God that gives us not only saving faith, but a sustaining faith to press forward. Let me read this to you. Faith in God shields us from the fiery darts of Satan. It shields us from his accusations, his condemnation, his lies. Satan might lie to us and accuse us, but it is faith in God that overcomes them. Faith in God gives the believer confidence and is what keeps us from being moved by our feelings. Faith in God keeps us from being up one day and down the next, tossed here and there. Faith in God is our anchor Faith in God assures us that our Heavenly Father loves us unconditionally. Faith in God speaks a better word. It is the voice of truth. Every believer must be strong in their faith in God. Where is your faith and where are your eyes? Don't get too excited about fox hunting, although it's exciting. Don't get yourself off track. Our pursuit is after Jesus. Paul said, I want to know him. I press on to know him. He is my everything. My righteousness is in him. My confidence is in him even when I fail. Number five, and we end with this, faith in God empowers us. When you awaken to the reality that God likes you the way you are, he's died for you, he's imputed righteousness to you, he's given you confidence, it allows us to rise up and say no to sin. It empowers us, despite our flaws, to minister to other believers. How many times are we crippled? Being like, I'm not good enough. I, what do I have to offer? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Faith in God says God has saved me, justified me. He's imputed righteousness into my account. He's given me his spirit. He's called me. If he's called me and equipped me, I'm empowered. Believers must awake and realize that faith in God allows us, us, In the natural, the defeated, the unqualified, and the unworthy. Faith in God allows us to be victors, qualified, and worthy. It allows us to declare, I am a man or a woman of God. I will go to work today and enjoy it. 
Because I'm living for Jesus. My eyes are on him. I can raise my family to love and serve the Lord regardless of my present circumstances. Confidence. Empowerment. I can be victorious. I can do X, Y, and Z. Brothers and sisters, fix your eyes afresh on Jesus this morning. Allow faith in God to be established and grounded. This basic teaching, according to Scripture, allow this faith in God, this elementary principle, to rise up and be active. It is not just to save you. It is to sustain you. It is to empower you to live out your salvation. And can I just say that faith in God, families, couples, this kind of language and faith in God should be something that we talk about and that we declare and speak over each other. You are the righteousness of Christ, right? We declare that. We speak that. We teach our children these things. It's central in our conversations. It's central in our prayers. Why? Because it's about identity. He has saved us, made us righteous, given us confidence. He has empowered us. This is who I am. I do not stand before you as Pastor Tim because I came from a good family. I overcame sin in my life. I went to Bible school. And now I'm such a great person that I can stand up here and talk to you. That's not true. That's not true at all. There's only one reason I can stand here. There's only one reason you can take your place in the kingdom. It's because of our faith in God. What he has done. Don't lose sight of that. Or you become tossed here and there. Easily moved. This is... The truth upon which we stand. So you come out of two weeks ago with all kinds of foxes you're trying to hunt, right? That's okay. As long as your eyes are on Jesus. Knowing that that fox is not what keeps you from him, right? We want to kill the fox. We want to live holy. But I don't need to do that just to somehow be right with God. Faith in God. What does this mean? What does this look like? I want to encourage all of you, get up in the morning and say, I am the righteousness of God through Christ Jesus. Make that positive confession. Declare that over yourself. I want you to begin to think, I am a man or woman of God. And you can quote the scripture, Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. What is it that causes a person to think this way? It's their faith in God. We never graduate from faith in God. This is why Paul said, in view of God's mercies, Romans 12, it's not in the lineup. Romans 12 and verse 1, in view of God's mercy. When we behold Jesus, when we understand his mercy, and we place our faith in that, we then offer our lives as living sacrifices. When you walk in church on Sunday morning and your eyes are fixed on Jesus and you know that he's made you righteous and he has made you everything that you didn't deserve, you want to worship. When you behold that, you want to live holy. When you behold that on Monday, you want to go to work and live for him. See, this is a foundation in our lives. Faith in God. <laughs>